Search Hawaii, where food meets culture, is brought to you by Grand Wailea, a Waldorf Astoria resort on Maui. We live to create extraordinary lifetime memories with transportation provided by Hawaiian Airlines. I'm Mike Lafaro, and I'm from Block Island, Rhode Island. Kainoa Horkajo from the island of Maui. I'm a professional chef. I'm a student of the culture. Mike and I met at the Grand Wailea working and just hit it off. I love anything that has to do with the oceans. Love spending time in the mountains, getting into the ocean, all of it. Kainoa had this great idea to do some dinners based on the Kaolana Mahina. I thought it was an awesome idea. We went on adventures up into the mountain, down to the ocean, and really just started connecting with that. So I do what I do, Kainoa does what he does, and see how that translates to a plate. Guided by the moon, but with a modern twist. It's the ultimate way to connect to the food. It's a coming together of food and culture. Welcome to Search Hawaii, where food meets culture. We're on amazing Maui. This is Chef Mike and Kainoa's home island. So they're gonna be the foragers and the guides. Let's see what kind of adventures and ingredients they come up with in their own backyard. Every time Mike and I go searching, we like to base them on the Hawaiian moon calendar. Right now we're in the second month of the wet season, Makali'i, also talking about the constellation Pleiades. Great for bottom fishing, for deep sea fishing. Also strawberry guava are still in the mountains and so we're going there. All right, bro. Man. Oh, I love this place. I'm excited for Mike and I to go to one of my favorite valleys to go hiking in, a place I've been to since I was a little kid. You know, every time before I go hiking, uh, it's proper that we stop and do some cultural protocol. So Mike and I stop at the entrance to the, the valley and do an oli to chant for acceptance in. You know, the, this whole concept came from our connection with this island and with Maui. Between Mike and I, uh, it's nice to be back in our own backyard. Super comfortable to be back home and super excited to see what we can find out there. One of the coolest things about this valley, uh, like many in Hawaii, is, is that we see elements of old settlements there. And so there's village site, uh, old loikalo, taro patches that we walk through. Place you think in the middle of nowhere used to house hundreds of people. walk up, you're crossing the river a whole bunch of times, the stream, and then you get to this waterfall. The valley narrows and gets real steep. And you gotta come up the side and then basically go up over the waterfall. It's, yeah, it's just hilarious to see. I mean, Kainoa's at home in the valleys and, and climates, and he, bam, he's just up that waterfall in about three leaps. It's a nice, it's like a nice walk in the park. And Mike's making it look like he's climbing Yosemite. Just because I'm not, I'm, that's not familiar at all territory me, like me where it's like the ocean, I'm like rah, you know what I mean? I can just charge it. The rocks hurt a lot more than the water, so. <laughs> you know, even though we've got this mission, it's always nice to stop and appreciate uh, the beauty that's there. But, that's just the beginning of the hike, and now the ropes start and the fun begins. So we're up there and uh, we find all this, these big patches of yellow ginger, and we got a lot of different varieties of ginger. Yellow ginger is real invasive, not like the native avapuhi. 
and we're uh, picking the flowers. Mike really likes the flavors of that. I know, it tastes good. Uh, you aren't yeah. going to survive on it, but... Yeah. Die happy. Die happy, Bob. It's just such a beautiful, fragrant plant. It's got so many different aspects. The flower has a certain fragrance to it. The leaves have certain fragrance to them. And then actual, the, the, the base of the stems, um, almost like our honeysuckle, and they have a different aspect to it. So it's just like you get this complete ginger package by using all different components of the plant. All right, bra. Strawberry guava country. All right. This one right here. Oh, strawberry guava, it's one of those fruits where it's kind of balanced. It already is sweet and it's sour at the same time. So as a chef, that's, that's really great because you don't have to do much to it. You don't have to manipulate it too much. It's just getting the flavor out, like the ginger, just extracting the flavor. The strawberry guava are delicious, but they're horribly invasive. They create a real hostile environment for any native plants. Uh, dark canopy, shallow root base create a lot of mud. They're, they're no good. So the more we can eat, the better. All right, Mike, how much of this do we need, do you think, for what uh, you're, uh, yeah, whatever the hell you're planning? I think we're looking good here, man. Yeah. I, think we're, yeah, I think we're pretty close. Maybe a couple more. All right, and then we're out of here. So it was a beautiful day in the mountains. We gathered some great stuff, but we got to get an early night's sleep because tomorrow we're going fishing, but not by boat. We're actually going to paddle out there by six-man canoe and go do some bottom fishing. Should be cool. Yesterday we got to the mountains, got to forage some great stuff. Now next morning, dark and early, still a couple hours till sunrise and met some friends down at the beach. We're gonna get out on six man canoe, go paddle uh, to a favorite spot and do some bottom fishing. Mean bro. So I'm thinking a little hand line on the way out. That's the lucky, your lucky door. A little goose layer. It's, it's awesome when you get a whole bunch of fishermen together because there's like about four million ideas that get thrown around about how to rig and where to put a pole and everything. So yeah, we're just rigging up, getting ready to go. We got the canoe all rigged up. Next thing to do is push it down to the ocean, get it to shore, get everybody ready to go, heave hole into the ocean and start paddling out in the dark. There's almost no greater feeling than getting an early start to the day. And whether whatever you're doing, but to be out there on the ocean, paddling with friends and the sun's rising over Haleakala, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing feeling. You can tell Mike's right at home. You know, this guy has crossed the channels in one man and six man, paddled up to Northwestern Hawaiian Islands with people in canoes. So he's, he's pulling the weight. And when me and Ty and Kaleo are going, it's good. But as soon as Mike goes on, you feel like uh, so this push from behind. And it's like, oh, this guy's got some guns, man. He can, he can move. So it's always nice when Mike's paddling. All right, brothers, right. looks like we hit the spot. We're at the outer bumps. We drop some lines down in the front. We paddle out to these traditional fishing grounds and you know nobody knows it better than Ty and Kaleo. These guys have been fishing these waters for a long time. Kaleo's a, a big fisherman, Ty, big time kayak fisherman. So they know exactly where to go and we just start dropping line in the water and start fishing. Ty's working kind of a surface um, floater with his balloon and uh, Kaleo's kind of fishing for bait in the back and uh, kind of and I got the hand lines out, and um, you know, it's like this is, that's the life. It's a, it's a good day already. This method of fishing, this hand lining is ancient, it goes back to uh, our ancestor Maui fishing up the islands uh, with a hook from the bottom of the sea. There's no reel, there's no pole, you just drop a hook down in there with the rope, you catch a fish, you gotta reel it back in, pull it back in with your own hands. 
the opportunity to just basically by your own power pull in a fish on a line um, it's just there's something that's masculine about that you know that's like I mean what's the next step is like you dive in there and bite the thing and bring it out yourself you know I got him okay now we see that so Ty's got one of his favorite rod and reels and uh, he ends up hooking up pulls up got a little bit of a good fight and pulls up a nice size uku uh, shortly after that, you hear Mike go, oh, I got one, starts pulling it in. And so I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. And so I pull it up a little bit, and then I feel like it's gone, but then it tugs again. And, and right after one bites his hook, one bites mine. And so I'm pulling it up, I'm all stoked, because Mike's got one, I got one, we're pulling it up, pulling his up. And so we're both kind of pulling up our lines, and then we realize that with the current, our lines had actually kind of crossed. It's like, ah, our lines were tied, and the fish bit Mike's hook and I was just helping him pull up his fish. So Kanoa pulled, Kanoa pulled it up, but it ended up being on my line, so it was my fish. Good job, Mike. Yeah, bro. All right, Mike, bro, boys, looks like we're uh, about there, man, in time. So yeah, we caught, we caught some fish. Um, my back is charred red by this point. Um, it's just such an awesome way to start the day. It's time to get in, get up country to a farm. Mike's got this cool idea. Uh, he loves Mike McCoy's farm and, and these edible flowers. He's got some great ideas to put them on some dishes. So we got to paddle back in now. Now we got the long paddle home and, and uh, get up to the farm. So we tromped at the valley, um, got some great stuff. We went out, caught some bottom fish. I mean, this is like all time epic already. And now we're gonna head up the hill. We're gonna go see a really good buddy of mine, Mike McCoy. Mike. Hey, dude. What's up, sir? Jeff. How are you? Okay, you thanks, you got me standing up. Give me a hug. Don't ever call me Chef, right? <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. That's my good friend. Looking, looking uh, good. Hey, Mike, how's, how's it? Too? How's it? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us up today. Okay, so what you up for? You know, we, we did some fishing, we got some muku, and cool. we're, doing, we're putting together a dinner, and... <laughs> <laughs> you really got some fish this yeah, time. Yeah, I did, man, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Mike just has so much variety on the farm, you know, so we go up there and he's got, just got these beautiful baby turnips and he's got these gorgeous radishes and then he's just got rows and rows of beautiful flowers, edible flowers. Well, maybe you need uh, some flowers on there. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. these are beautiful. Yeah, what are these? For some color, that nice white fish, get yeah. some, um, some nice bright reds. And... For sure. Where uh, are these? I like, I get my flower on. I love to get my flower on. So it's like, let's just start cutting some flowers because, again, it's one of those yeah. floral things. Color it's those therapy. flavors that... You can never replicate if you try it. You just need to just put them on a plate. And then I noticed that he's got all his citrus trees are just popping everywhere. So immediately I'm like, okay, the farm's just telling me to do flowers and citrus. So um, that's an idea that pops in my head. So I like our Meyer lemons, Mike. <sighs> Loaded, man, wow. it's, it's awesome. It's been, well, so much rain this year. You know, it's this Meyer amazing. lemon tree is just busting. And uh, Mike says it's in part because uh, of the rain. And, and But that's why this is going off, is because of the rain? Rain and also we have beehives. Oh, you guys got bees? Yeah, we got bees. Ooh. Oh. I'm looking at LaFaro and I'm like, hey, what, what could be funner than putting on some bee suits and messing around with some beehives? All right. You want to get stung, Mike? Yeah, dude, I'm just going to ask you. You can zip me up. Yes. That was wild to put, like put the whole suit on and stuff. It was like felt like Halloween. Is this my little kids? Is this my son's suit? You look like Breaking Bad. <laughs> so Kaino and I get all suited up, and Kelly and Mike bring us in and show us the hives. So Mike opens the hive and takes out one of the inserts, you know, and you don't realize that there's like hundreds of bees on this one insert. There you go. <laughs> you gotta like maintain your cool, you know, because they're constantly like buzzing around you and you can hear like their energy level gets up, you know, when they're agitated and so it's it's pretty intense. So this this honey is these are oh, yeah. still filling those up. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. He has me just pry off a little bit of honeycomb and 
I'm thinking that's gonna be perfect with the citrus and the flowers because it's just honeycomb, it's different. It's a different way to kind of get honey. Um, it's not the familiar kind of texture and everything of honey, but with honey flavor, so. Uh, LaFaro's got an idea to use the honey and the honeycombs in, in a dessert or something. And uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to see what he comes up with. But time's running short. We got people coming. It's, it's time to start getting in the kitchen and cooking. We're here where it all started at the Grand Wailea, at Mike's Restaurant, Humu Humu Nuku Nuku Apua'a. You know, we've been doing dinners here for a while based on the moon calendar. I'm Kako, I'm support, and we go to work. We got a lot of people coming in. It's just time to bust out and make some good, good food. So when we were um, bottom fishing on the six man, we caught this, you know, these beautiful uku, and uku is a fish you don't want to really mess with it too much. So I'm gonna steam it in kind of a, you know, what I call basically like an aromatic steamed uku. So for our um, aromatic steamed uku, the first step is to scale, clean, and gut and gill the fish. Um, and then what we want to do is score it. Then we slice peeled ginger very thinly on a Japanese mandolin. Then we're gonna put garlic, ginger, and green onion into the scores of the fish. So we're gonna lay down some cilantro on our yellow ginger leaves that we got up in the valley. We're gonna put down some more green onions, some more ginger, as well as garlic. And then place the fish on the leaf with all the aromatics. And then we'll do the same on top. So then we're gonna uh, season the fish, salt and pepper. And we're gonna put on a little sauce of uh, shoyu, rice wine vinegar, garlic, and ginger. And then uh, we'll put this in the steamer for about 12 minutes and then uh, carefully place it on a serving tray and it's good to go. All right, so after the uku comes out of the steamer, then we're just gonna hit it with some more cilantro and some uh, green onion, and then we're gonna pour the hot sesame oil and ginger on top. Yeah, so in our hike into the valley, you know, we, we found just a lot of yellow ginger and a lot of strawberry guava, so I just feel like they had this natural affinity for each other. So I'm gonna do a strawberry guava yellow ginger coconut sorbet. So for our strawberry guava, yellow ginger, and coconut sorbet, the first step is we have to make a simple syrup. And simple syrup is basically just sugar and water. So for this one, this one's very simple. It's a pound of sugar to a pint of water. So it's basically a pound to a pound. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add to that our um, clean strawberry guava, and we're gonna cook that down on the stove for about five minutes. So while the guavas are cooking in the simple syrup, we're gonna take our yellow ginger and we're gonna clean it. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of peel that little outer rough skin off and that's gonna leave that, that kind of that tender inside tendril in. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through our ginger and clean them all up. And then we're just gonna chop up our ginger leaves. So once your guavas are cooked down, they've all kind of bursted into your simple syrup. We're gonna pour that over the ginger leaves and flowers. And then you're gonna cover it and let it just sit for about 45 minutes. So after we infuse the um, strawberry guava and the ginger, we're gonna add coconut milk to this and adjust the taste. Um, then we're gonna strain it through some uh, uh, chinois or some fine mess uh, cheesecloth. And then we're gonna cool it and we're gonna spin it in an ice cream machine. So the next, the uh, final step is to pour this into an ice cream machine and just process it for about 12 minutes or so. Uh, they make home ice cream machines that do about a quarter at a time and they're perfect for this. So we have all this beautiful citrus and the honeycomb and the honey from Mike and the flowers and it just kind of reminds me of an orange salad my mom used to make when I was a kid. So I'm just gonna do this composed citrus salad with honeycomb and flowers. All right, so for the composed uh, citrus salad, uh, first we're gonna dress the citrus that we have. So we have oranges, tangelos. First step is we're gonna drizzle with olive oil. Next step is we're gonna season with salt and pepper. This happens to be a lye and pahakai from Molokai. All right, next step is um, we're gonna put on some of the uh, honey with the honeycomb. All right, so these are the flowers from uh, Mike McCoy's garden. And uh, so what we're gonna do is then just garnish the oranges um, with the flowers. All right, so then the final touch is just a little bit of uh, chiffonade mint. So yeah, so I have, the, you know, the uku's ready to go, the citrus salad is going, guests are gonna start to arrive here any minute. I'm feeling pretty good about the feast that's coming up. And uh, it's go time. Everything's ready to go. Guests are arriving. Can't wait to go just hang out with some friends and 
and come back and just kind of share share all this beautiful stuff that we got here at home. I'm excited. I can't wait. All right, guys. All righty. Here we are. Here we go. People are here for dinner. I think expectations are high, but there's just, you know, we put a lot of love into this food, so I'm excited to see what happens. Oh my gosh. This is so good. The fish is so tender. Oh, the flavors are amazing. Uh, this is cooked to like the right moistness, everything. Else. Just uh, really good flavors. It's such an interesting mix of flavors. The strawberry guava, I mean, it's, it's unexpected, but it's wonderful. This has been delicious, and I've never tasted anything like this before. It's just how it tastes. <laughs> oh my god. You know, this one's been a real journey, right. just to uh, be right. able to be back home on Maui, and now to bring it back here to, to Humu, and, and being able to feed our friends and family, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's real special. And so we end where it all began, at the Grand Wailea's Humu Humu Nuku Nuku Apua restaurant, where Chef Mike and Kainoa first started these special dinners based on the Hawaiian moon calendar, and Search Hawaii, where food meets culture. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget, you can find Chef Mike's recipes online at searchhawaiitv.com. Search Hawaii, where food meets culture, is brought to you by Grand Wailea, a Waldorf Astoria resort on Maui. We live to create extraordinary lifetime memories. With transportation provided by Hawaiian Airlines.